and welcome to another Corbus Photoshop tutorial. My name is Jan Orbus and today I'm going to show you how to make it rain um, by using nothing but the built-in Photoshop filters. So this image was already taken on a very very gray and cloudy day and it looks like it's about to start raining every minute Mm, but before we actually start creating our own rain layer, uh, I feel that we could make the sky and the clouds look a bit more dramatic and a bit more dark. And to do this, we are going to apply an adjustment layer down here, selecting our levels, and then bringing our white point slider up to where this first little peak is right here. And we'll do the same thing with our gray point slider here in the middle by bringing this down almost where this peak is right here. Now you will see that this layer actually affects our entire image and this is something that we really do not want because the girl right here and the beach has gotten way too dark and this is where the advantage of our adjustment layer comes into play because every adjustment layer comes with a built-in layer mask. Now to bring back our original image layer which is underneath our adjustment layer all we need to do is to paint pure black with a brush onto our uh, adjustment layer layer mask right here and we simply start to paint into our image with the brush and the pure black color just like this bringing back our original image down here but still keeping the sky as dramatic as we want it to be. Now I'm going to resize the brush make it a bit more smaller so I can actually take out our adjustment levels right here in the girl's face. Now the sky already looks a lot more dramatic so we can actually start creating our rain layer by clicking on the new layer icon down here and then filling our new layer with pure black color just like this. Now the next step is to add noise by selecting our filter noise, add noise filter right here. Now um, I usually use an amount of 100% but you can adjust that to whatever suits you best, whatever you feel like. Just make sure that you check the monochromatic checkbox down here because you don't want your uh, rain to be that colorful. So make sure you check that box, click OK. And now this looks rather um, more like snow than rain. So we are going to apply another filter, selecting the filter, blur, motion blur filter. And again, you can set the adjustments to whatever you think looks the best. I usually go for a distance of 100 pixels. And since rain usually doesn't fall down straight from top to bottom in a 90 degree angle, um, I'll set that to an angle of, let's say, 80 degrees and then click OK. Now, this almost looks like rain, or at least it's beginning to look like rain, but it's still uh, very gray and we need our rain to actually be on a pure black background. So again we are going to apply levels, selecting image, adjustment, levels, and then bring our white point slider all the way up until it hits the edge of our histogram right here. And then take our black point slider and bring it all the way down until all of our three sliders right here are really, really close together and then click OK. Now, um, you might have wondered why it's so important to actually have our rain on a pure black background. 
And this is because we are going to set our blending mode up here from normal to screen. And this will turn anything that's pure black into transparent. And now you already get a pretty good idea of what this is going to look like. But we still have um, these lines on the top and the, and the bottom of our image that we want to get rid of. So we are going to select our rain layer and transform or rescale it a little bit using the free transform tool and pulling this up a little bit and a little bit down right here and then hit enter to confirm. So this doesn't look too bad, but the rain is way too sharp. Rain doesn't really come down like, like this. It doesn't look very realistic. So we are going to apply another filter blurring our rain using the blur and then the Gaussian blur and anything, any radius between one and three will do, will be fine. And I'm going to select something in between. So I'm going to adjust it to, let's say, 2.2, 2.1 pixels, and then click OK. Now we've blurred our rain layer, and this already looks more realistic than it did before, but I want my rain to be coming a little bit more from the direction of our camera into the girl's face. So again, I'm going to transform our layer, selecting Edit, Transform, and then Perspective. And then simply pull on this little, little uh, uh, rectangle we have up here, pull it over to your left in this direction, and this will make the rain look a little bit more like it's coming from the direction of our camera. Now, if you wanted the rain to be falling into the direction of our camera, you could have done the same thing down here or down here and pulled it to the side um, down here. Now, hit enter again to confirm this. And it already looks okay to me. It's, it's, it's decent rain, but we can even make it look a little bit more realistic using a very, very simple technique. Now, as I've told you before, um, we have set our layer to screen mode, making everything that's pure black transparent. Now, all I need to do to make my rain look a little bit more inconsistent, because rain usually doesn't fall down like this, it comes in waves. All we need to do is we need to select our brush again, use a very big brush, about a thousand pixels, I'd say, will do, and make it very, very soft. Now, all we need to do is set the opacity down to, let's say, around 50 or 60 percent and start painting into our rain layer with pure black. And wherever we touch the layer using pure black, it is going to turn transparent. So we can make the rain actually, oops, excuse me, actually make the rain look a little bit more inconsistent by painting with a soft brush and an opacity of around 50 to 60 percent onto our rain screen layer. Now this already looks a lot more realistic than it did before, but I feel that the image still is a little bit too red, it could be a bit more cooler, a bit bluer. So I'm going to apply another adjustment layer on top of our image layer right here. So I select my image layer and then click on my adjustment layer icon down here, go to Curve, select the red channel, make a little dot right in the middle of our uh, red channel histogram simply by clicking into it and bringing down the red curve a little bit like this. And this will turn our image, uh, or give our image um, a cooler impression and make it look a bit more greenish, bluish. Now, um, to make it even a bit darker, um, I sometimes like to use um, a vignette 
on top of my image and all I need to do to create my own viet is um, select our elliptical mark tool from up here and make a selection that touches every edge of our image just like this. Now we are going to soften our selection by clicking on select, modify and feather and applying a big radius. The biggest radius we can actually choose is a 250 pixels. That always depends on the size and the resolution of your image, but in this case, since this is a high-res image, we're going to say OK and select 250 pixel radius. Now, this um, still selects this middle part of our image, but to create a vignette, we actually want to darken these outer corners right here. So we are going to invert our selection by clicking on Select and Inverse and then applying another adjustment layer curve on top of our image layer. Now all we need to do is click into the curve and bring the, the curve down just like this to darken the, image, uh, the edges of our image. And here we go. This actually creates a very realistic looking dark dramatic image.